okay. So um, many of us know you as MP um, for Medina, and we want to take the opportunity to congratulate you. Uh, since this is the first time we are hosting you on winning that seat in the in the way that you did it, not just winning the seat, but in the way, <laughs> in the way that you did it, the kind of levels that you showed. Uh, awesome, awesome. I mean, the, uh, you were just in a comfortable lead. <laughs> <laughs> and we bless God. We bless God yes. for, for that. I mean, uh, um, but who who is who is uh, Francis Xavier Susu Honorable? Who um, that that's a multi million questions because uh, almost on a daily basis I'm still trying to find who I am um, and why I am here on earth and the purpose for which God uh, created me. Uh, but I would say that. Um, for the few years that I have lived, what I have seen about myself or known about myself is the fact that um, I was born uh, with a very lonely background, like as many, many Ghanaians uh, will relate to because um, of our poverty levels. Um, at a very, very tender age, uh, becoming a victim of the situations that uh, were confronting me. So, for example, you have a mother who has never been to school, who doesn't have any formal training. You have a dad who has not been to school, no formal training, and both of them becoming victims of their background because of their fetish background and so on and so forth. And uh, you have a situation where you had to now put up with um, sex siblings or let's say uh, yeah i would say uh, five other siblings because we're six in number eventually we had one adopted um, sister who joined us so we were seven and and we had to struggle together to just make ends meet and i recall that at a very tender age i mean life began with a struggle and uh, we'll be struggling going around selling you know, everything that is sellable on the streets we sell, uh, from pepper, tomatoes, onion, uh, coconut, um, brooms, meat pie, um, anything that you can sell, <laughs> we used to sell. Um, and my favorite one was kerosene, where we used to do, it's been a very, very, uh, it's been a very exciting uh, childhood and gradually through childhood. Oh, no, I sold um, some more. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. I knew that I will have friends and, and brothers on this platform. You know, our our mm -hmm. our 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 path didn't just cross. I know I definitely will have friends and brothers here. And I'm sure you might have done Odem Lat to you know. Odem Lao, Odem Lao. You know, that is the, oh, the ball. And, <laughs> and and so um yeah, so life from, from, from the start was just a struggle, but there was some level of persistency and determination, and there were many days and, and nights you begged for money to find a place to sleep. Sometimes you beg for money on the street so you can go to school. To the extent that even when I became the senior boys prefect of St. John's Grammar School, I was still sleeping in a kiosk. It was a wooden kiosk at Kotobabi Police Station. So this is how it's been from the beginning until the Lord, uh, through Christians um, at the Village of Hope Orphanage, got me adopted into the orphanage, uh, through which eventually I came to Legon, did a first degree, and um, the rest is now history and just seeing what the Lord keep doing. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing. So what, what which primary school did you attend? I had the... I was at uh, it was the Accra Newtown 8 and 6 primary. And you know, 8 and 6 because uh, when the 8 are in the morning, the 6 will come in the afternoon. When the uh, 6, when after two weeks, you rotate. And that was how we survived, you know, Accra Newtown. So, so you enjoyed the... And yes, by the way, I was also at... Oh, yes. Ah, so you were also taking the Shani Koko too. 
<laughs> and, and I was at the Mofra Chepe, Mofra Chepe Preparatory School. Uh, Mofra Chepe is in the Tizako, you know, inside Tizako, around Newtown. So, <laughs> and then from there you went to um, St. John's Grammar, where you were the, the senior boy. Yes, correct? I was at St. John's Grammar. In fact, um, yes, but St. John's Grammar was a full story on its own because I recall that the, the money that my mom borrowed to pay my admission fee at St. John's Grammar School, my mom kept, kept paying interest on that money until I come second year before I used part of my loan to go and pay that money. So it was a full story in St. John's Grammar School, but the Lord was faithful. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. We thank God. Um, God. God has really done a lot. And um, by the grace of God, you are seven in the parliament of Ghana, representing the people of Medina. <laughs> Honorable, so when, yeah. when it comes to leadership, when it comes to leadership, what, what is your concept of leadership? Um, my concept of leadership is service, service, service. Um, uh, my, my my definition of leadership is service. Everything about service. Now, uh, I believe that the, 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 the foundation or the bedrock uh, for leading people is your desire to selflessly serve those people. And that if, I mean, no leadership would ever have real impact without you know the the understanding that i am entering into that leadership position only for the service of the people and so my concept of leadership um it's not about the power it's not about the influence but it is about the service thank you very much so does that have a bearing with the choice of profession, um, the law? Is it related in any way? It does. It does because um, I have seen my life, I've seen many twists and turns in my life. And I recall that the first inspiration for doing law was the desire to fight for people who had no one to fight for them. Because mm -hmm. when we used to live at Newtown, it was basically like survival of the fetus. Women were abused, children were abused, all kinds of unlawful fights. The strong always won the day. Police and military patrols would come occasionally and they would beat people. You see blood oozing and they would carry them away. And some never returned. We never knew where they went. So I kept asking myself, I mean, what can you do about this kind of situation you find yourself in? And the answer is placing yourself at a position where your expertise can be of service to these people. So I recall when I went to Legon and, and became a lawyer, I mean, most of my time, most of my time was dedicated to I mean, representation of people on pro bono basis. In fact, when I joined Justice for All program, I represented in excess of 800 people in prison for free. I mean, I, I have followed multiple cases in the service of the people. If you recall, uh, the Mawako Pepe case, I was a lawyer for the victim. The Dr. Ali Gabas case, when 16-year-old boy was sodomized, I was a victim protecting the victim. There was a 12-year-old girl defied by a police officer. I was a lawyer for the victim. There was Christopher Obama, who was violated by some military men and, you know, beating and rubber melted on his skin. I was a lawyer for him. Felix Nyaba was wrongfully incarcerated. I was his lawyer. I mean, their names, it goes on and on and on and on. And it's all because of the service. 
the service. I recall that there was one case, which is Erika Santi, who was convicted for defilement at a time that, I mean, the, the evidence was not exhaustive. I, I went on appeal at the Supreme Court. He was acquitted and discharged at the time that he had already served 15 years in hard labor. And talks about preparation, you know. So eventually there may be young people on this platform who are desiring of becoming leaders. Some may see leadership as the V8 the MPs are sitting in. Some may see leadership as uh, MPs common fund. Some may see leadership as the way they sit on TV and everybody say, yeah, 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 yeah. But we must begin to redefine our mind to see leadership as service. Because it is only when you see leadership as service that you will be willing and ready to subject yourself to the preparation the Lord will take you through. Because if the Lord is preparing you to serve, you are going to be broken. And, and so you must be broken and yet be willing to mend others. I mean, people will wrong you. Like the people you, you support are the people who are going to wrong you. But the Lord will be looking at, I mean, the, the, the ability for you to look at the same people and let go and still be willing to serve them. Honorable, how did the leadership journey start for you? When did you first become conscious of leading and what are the leadership roles and positions that you've taken on this journey? Um, it, it, in fact, the leadership journey um, started way back um, as a young child desiring to uh, serve others. I recall that um, as a little child in primary, I think starting in primary four, I became the class captain all the way to P6, where, you know, in a typical side too, I became the bellboy. And you know that the bellboy, if I don't ring the bell, nobody goes to break. So it was a big position. <laughs> then <laughs> from the bellboy position, <laughs> we go to, we go to um, uh, St. John JHS at Kokomemle uh -huh. behind Joy FM. Um, over there, I became a section leader. Um, then, uh, when I got to St. John's Grammar School, uh, got involved in various uh, roles uh, from the uh, drama club leader to school choir leader into, um, I mean, uh, prayer warrior with SU, into uh, Catholic Students Union, into... Um, the SRC secretary for Greater Accra Zone 5, then becoming the senior boys prefect, and also at the same time, the SRC president for Greater Accra Zone 5, SRC. Um, and then before I got into University of Ghana, Legon. Back at Legon, um, I was a class captain from the Russian uh, class. Um, then eventually, um, uh, when uh, I to the third year, I ran for SRC presidency at, at Legon, but I lost that position gallantly, uh, which means that losing is part of the, the, the journey. Um, and uh, I was one of the leaders of the uh, Rhythms, which was a choir in, uh, on campus, uh, played a role in the Pax Choir. You know, it was actually the Catholic Charismatic Renewal the of, of Pax Romana, then um, I was part of the uh, the leadership of the I mean the Vanda Christian Fellowship. Um, eventually at Legon, I became the welfare yes. officer for the SRC. Then um, yeah, played a role in that capacity. Uh, at a point, work on the SRC communication committee as um, uh, like as a legal advisor, and then. Um, um, after Legon, when I came back to, um, to do my second degree, uh, which is in law, I was a class captain for the law student for two years. I contested for the LS, is the LSU presidency, uh, and I lost that position also. Uh, but then I continued as a class captain for additional two years at Makola when I had to lead uh, my colleagues at Makola before. I was called to the bar in 2010. I recall that at Makola, 
uh, when I stood for SRC president again in Makola, I lost that position also. So you see, you may want to be a leader, uh, but losing doesn't change anything. Um, and I recall that anytime I lost, people were like, don't do the class captain again. If they, do, if they don't value your service as a class captain, for that reason, they will not give you the position. Don't do it again. I said, oh, it doesn't matter. It's all about the service to the people. And I kept serving them. And I recall that when I was in the final year law school, that was when my script was adjudged the best. And I joined the International Mood Court competition and for the first time flew to the U.S. And that was going to be my very first trip to the U.S. where I had a chance to travel to about six different states. And that, that opened several, several other doors um, until I got called to the bar in 2010. Um, then um, decided to join competitive politics somewhere in 20, 2013 and prepared for the parliamentary primaries. Uh, it was a gallant fight, but... Uh, I was a winner 10 loser in that competition uh, in 2015, uh, where Onabu Amadu Sorogo became the candidate. But unfortunately, he went and lost in the 2016 election. And I went back, laced my boots and came back. And then in 2020, I won the primaries. And in, uh, in 2019, I won the primaries and 2020 won to become a member of parliament for Medina. So it's been a long journey. Are there certain principles that underpin your leadership? Are there certain principles that guide you um, so far as your leadership is concerned? Um, I have some very fundamental principles. Um, first of all, um, I believe leadership uh, is, is divine. Uh, it's a key to violate other people, destroy others. Then someday God will ask you. So, um, I believe that I derive um, the opportunity to lead from God. And therefore, uh, the leadership must be uh, in accordance with the values and the dictates of God. Um, secondly, I believe that leadership, uh, service must be the center of, of leadership. Um, actually, it's selfless service. And, and that at all material time, we as leaders must be willing to make sacrifices for the people that we lead. Um, number three, I believe that leaders must be compassionate. Um, if you are not driven by compassion, there are many things you would not be able to do. Uh, but if you are driven by compassion, um, then uh, your, 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 your attributes uh, to leadership is going to be very, very, very different. And a leader must, must have a conviction. You, you must you must be convicted by what you believe and, and you must stand for your conviction. Um, a leader must not be uh, so weak and blown away by air. And, 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 and the fact is that if you do not have any conviction, you are going to, you will fall to all kinds of ideas that, 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 that go around, you know, leadership. So um, these are some of the values I think that underpin leadership. And most importantly, uh, humility is a value, I believe, uh, is also very, very needed for a successful leadership. Thank you very much. Honorable, thank you for sharing these with us. This is from Fire Moise. How do you combine your Christian life and politics? <laughs> for me, everything about politics is also about God. And my politics must bring glory to God. My politics must serve the interests of, of God because I believe that in, in serving others, in that process, I serve God. But if you allow him, God can always be part of your politics. And I can assure you that God has always been part of my politics. Trust me, the day that the police came to uh, a church where I was preaching to arrest me because of the demonstration that we had done, we, I mean, I stood before the altar of God and with my Bible and declared that if God be God, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that arrest was not going to happen. It never happened. <laughs> <laughs> we thank God, honorable. We thank God for your life.